Welcome to Classic Game Room. This is 1990, and I'm rocking out to the Scorpions and playing Sega Genesis. It's actually 2012, and I'm still doing that. This is an incredible 2010 release for the almighty Genesis and Mega Drive. Party like it's 1990s all over again with this massive RPG, Pure Solar and the Great Architects. I would say get ready to dust off that Sega Genesis, but if you're watching this show, you're still using it every day, right? Now, I'll do what I can to not give away spoilers, but as much as it takes to demonstrate how awesome the music is in Pierce Solar and the Great Architects. Sounds like a band, like Huey Lewis and The News, but unlike Huey Lewis and said News, this is a massive 16-bit RPG adventure on the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. Released in 2010, by Watermelon, do you enjoy games like the Fantasy Star series Shining Force and Final Fantasy? Well, pay attention to this one. Pure Solar is a 21st century retro release. I've seen a lot of these lately. New games on the Intellivision, Sega Dreamcast, even the Vectrex. Now it's the Genesis's turn. Hey Watermelon, when's the 32X version coming out? You start out with a small party of just a few kids with big hair and progressively get stronger while gaining magic spells, new weapons, armor, friends, and the like. It's a giant old school style RPG. If you've played these kinds of games before, you'll be right at home with Pierce Solar, but come expecting a challenge. It's a difficult, time-consuming game, and in addition to that, it's not a straightforward, hold-you-by-the-hand kind of adventure. Pure Solar will test your grinding skills as much as your puzzle-solving and sheer exploration skills. The combat is excellent, as you can see it's turn-based, and reminds me a lot of Final Fantasy IV. You have standard weapon attacks, as well as magic and gathering. There's a command called gather, which you'll learn to use frequently which is what they're doing when they're gathering that white stuff from the air, collecting the force or something, and using it to become stronger. Or you can send a gather to another party member to make them stronger. Frequently, you'll need to gather before you unleash powerful magic spells, so it leaves you defenseless for a little bit. And that's part of what makes combat exciting, as you learn to juggle offensive attacks with gathering. And you'll want to pay close attention to your armor and accessories. In fact, accessories are one of the most important things in the game because they can cut some of the damage in half. And Pure Solar will frequently, sadistically leave you in the middle of massive adventures without a place to rest or heal, and you've got to make it through a sizable chunk of time alive. In addition to enabling some of your magic spells, gathering can be done multiple times to seriously increase your weapon's damage. Now, let's move on to the exploration part of the game. Like Fantasy Star 4, you see all of your party members, not just one. I always like that. There's lots of towns and environments to explore, loads of items, weapons, and armor and a genuinely entertaining storyline with a planet in trouble, that's about all I'll tell you. The characters are also likable, but what I dig is the writing style, which is far more relaxed and modern than the old school 90s RPGs. This packs some good laughs along the way, but I want to be clear here, this is a game for serious RPG enthusiasts only. Pure Solar is not a casual game. It's amazingly frustrating at times, especially when you get lost. Because the combat is draining after a while, you'll have to conserve your magic and health, but the designers found joy in hiding key items behind things that don't look like they're explorable parts of the environment, like this one part of the game where they hide a key behind a pillar that's impossible to find unless you just happen to walk into the wall there. 
or find a walkthrough online. Look, there's a play, pause, and stop button on the architecture. They invented the VCR! And there's a hidden key, you'll want that. Also, expect mazes, puzzles, and dozens of hours of your life spent in Pure Solar. In fact, I think this game was meant to be played more than once. Pure Solar isn't just about the video game, it's about the experience of owning a brand new Sega Genesis game again. With the plastic clamshell packaging, full color instruction manual, and physical Sega Genesis game cartridge. It also plays on the Mega Drive and works in PAL or NTSC. This is a great excuse to break out your Sega Nomad and stash of AA batteries once again. Since most of the time you can save frequently, it's a fun game to play on the go. Show those people on the train who's boss with your Sega Nomad. Now, to be perfectly honest, I'm still playing this game if I wanted this review out before 2020, I just had to hustle. In fact, as of this recording, they recently used Kickstarter to get funding for a Sega Dreamcast release, as well as Xbox 360. Is the ending any good? Well, I'll be as surprised as you are when I find out. It's a nice game to play in half hour to hour increments, you can save frequently. And once you get into it, you'll want to continue playing, but it does get frustrating at times. Pure Solar, a giant RPG on the Genesis that will bring many of us back to the days where we'd spent weeks in front of the TV playing Fantasy Star 2 and Fantasy Star 3. Yes, I'm one of the people who like that game. This could have used some more enemy diversity and a Vectrex release, but aside from that, it's great. It's time to reignite that 1990s console war once again and remind your friends that the Sega Genesis does what everything else don't. It Blast processes pure solar.